Ruth Charette is a local fermentation expert. Today, she will walk us through three different fermentation methods. Fermentation is probably one of the oldest methods of food preservation that there is. Uh, I got into fermentation probably, oh, 15 years ago um, when I had uh, an inflammatory response in my body and I went to a naturopath and she said, oh, you need to add fermented foods into your diet. Fermentation can take place with uh, honey, can take place with sugar, can take place with salt, or it can take place with uh, brine. And what you're doing with any of those substances is simply creating an environment for good bacteria to take over before the rotting, the bad bacteria takes over. It's a way of preserving food that makes the um, nutrients in the, in the food more bioavailable. So when you eat fermented foods, um, they are usually lacto-fermented in some way or another, and you're introducing different gut biota into your digestive tract. Every biota has a specific place within your digestive tract uh, that it needs to go, and it's like a lining to protect you from um, bad bacteria. As foods ferment, um, different aspects, different nutritional qualities become available um, to, to you as, as they age. So that, you know, a sauerkraut that's three months old is going to give you certain things and a sauerkraut that's six months old will give you a, a different biota. So the first thing I'm going to do is ferment uh, some spruce tips in honey. First thing to do, you're going to put a little bit of honey in the very bottom of the jar simply because it's really difficult to get it down there later. Then you put in whatever you're going to ferment, your spruce tips, and then top it up with honey. You can top it right up, you know, to the, to the buckle here. Um, no higher because it's going to bubble a little bit and it can froth and, and make a grand mess in your counter. Take a paper towel or a piece of cheesecloth and put it on the on the top of the jar because it has to breathe. It can't be, uh, can't be totally contained yet. Put a little mason jar ring or a, an elastic or anything like that on it and uh, leave it in your, on your counter. In two or three days it should start to bubble up and froth and you let that go until the frothing subsides a bit and then you can put a hard cap on it. So we're going to do some sauerkraut and um, first thing I'm going to do is chop the cabbage I'm going to put a layer down, add a little bit of salt, another layer, a little more salt, another layer, a little more salt. And you must use either sea salt or Himalayan pink salt, nothing that has an anti-caking agent, so no iodized salt. So after you've salted and layered, uh, you get to massage it. And in the massaging, what you want to do is you're just sort of introducing the salt to the cabbage. And you can over massage. So what you're looking for is when you start to get a little bit of juice down at the bottom of your bowl. Next thing I'm going to do once I've got the cabbage uh, tasting of salt and getting a little bit of moisture coming out of it, is I'm going to use a canning funnel and I'm going to pack some cabbage into the jar. So I'm just going to make really sure there's lots of brine or lots of the salty water uh, right up at the top. You want to make very sure that the cabbage stays underneath the brine. Last step is to take either a piece of paper towel or a piece of cheesecloth if you like and then you're going to sit it on your counter and by the next morning, maybe the next evening, uh, you will, it should start to bubble up and when it does you can make sure to push uh, the top of the cabbage right down underneath that brine one more time. Once it's finished, again, once it's finished its active bubbling, then you're going to put a, a, a sealed lid on, you know, the, the metal lid or plastic, and uh, seal it up and put it in the fridge. So this is another method of fermenting, and it's using brine. So to make a brine, um, you're using well water, and you're using uh, non-iodized salt. The ratio that I use is two tablespoons per liter of water. And you're going to put the salt in the, in the pan, 
water in the pan, give it a stir so that it's all dissolved, and then you're just going to bring it to a boil, and then you're going to let it cool down just so that it's warm enough that you can, you know, put, keep your hand on it. So I'm going to do some uh, carrots in brine with a little bit of garlic. So I've peeled the carrots and I'm going to chop them up into matchstick sized pieces. So the most important thing about packing whatever it is you're going to put in the jar, be it uh, cucumbers, zucchini, carrots, onions, any of those things, is to make sure they're in there really, really tight, that they're not going to move around. And then, uh, and I put my garlic in the bottom, and then I'm going to take my brine and I'm going to pour it right up so it's well past the top of the carrots. Last step, uh, something to keep dust and bugs out of your brine. So a piece of cheesecloth or a paper towel and then you can screw the mason jar top on just the metal ring. So there you go, there are three different methods of um, fermenting your food. Uh, very nice, low-tech, easy, simple, you don't need a whole lot of complicated equipment or anything like that to do this kind of stuff. So if you're, if you're buying or growing uh, your own vegetables and fruit, then in the making of these things, you're, you're getting from the earth this lovely living product that is um, composed of, of what's around you. Uh, it makes you part of the land, I think. It makes you, you know, uh, probably feel very differently about the land that you're working on. As you, you are intimately connected with it. You're made of it.